My stepsister wanted to brag and gloat because our father left in his inheritance for her a mansion. Well, there's one stipulation that she didn't know about, and I'm the only one who's in control of it. Let me tell you what that life-changing stipulation is. My dad's will was read today, and I'm shocked at the contents. This is by far one of the worst weeks of my life, and here I thought that last week was terrible. With the way that this week is going, I'm already done. I want to buy some snacks, lock myself in my room with my video games, and just disappear for a bit. I'm exhausted, sleep-deprived, and there's no appetite to speak of. I guess having to deal with the loss of my father is affecting me more than I thought it would. When I found out that my dad passed away, I just received the best news ever. I had just found out that I got my dream job, where I was going to be able to relocate. Working as a diplomat has been my dream ever since I was a young girl. I fell in love with the job when I saw my Aunt Cassidy. She was always dressed neatly, spoke elegantly, and knew exactly so many interesting facts about different countries. When she told me her job description, I was like, sign me up. So, I went to college, got my relevant education, and finally landed my job. It's a small role, but we have all got to start something, right? When I got the job, the first person I called was my father to tell him that I've just gotten the job. I could already hear him telling me that he was so proud of the young woman I was becoming. Yes, if you have not already guessed it, I'm a daddy's girl. My dad was very important to me. He was there for all my life's milestones. I started staying with him when I was 12. A year later, he got married to my stepmother who had a daughter, Violetta. She prefers to be referred to as Viola. Viola's two years younger than me, and she has been my sister for as long as I can remember. We have the kind of family where this is no distinction between who's related by blood. We're all a big happy family, so... When I called my father and someone else answered the phone to tell me that... He was in the hospital. I was devastated. He had suddenly collapsed, and the doctors were still trying to figure out what was going on. I booked the first flight back home immediately, and I planned to stay for about three days. Then I would return to work so that I could start with my new job. I never got to go to that job. I only got to see my father for an hour before the visiting hour was done, and, well, the next morning he passed. I sent an email to my new job and told them that I could not make it. They said condolences for my father, but did state that it was a time-sensitive position, of course, so the job was going to be given to somebody else. So, I went back home sooner than I wanted to and had to help with the funeral planning. My father's funeral was grand. He was somebody who was very respected in the community. He was also very wealthy. After the funeral, I had a lot of stuff to sign off on and so many people to talk to. I barely got any sleep because I was busy sorting out the household affairs. My stepmother, Claire, and Viola did not help me out. They said they knew nothing about official business and I was better at it. They grieved in the only way they knew how, eating a lot, crying, and shopping. I really felt sorry for Viola most of all. She's already had to experience the pain of losing her biological father, and now she had to endure the pain of losing a second dad. However, I had to be strong, the strong one in the family, and push her to get out of that slump because her midterms were starting soon. I got my stepmom to have her enrolled in online classes till she could go back to college. It was a lot to work to get through. I did not even have time to deal with my own grief. I was empty. All I knew was that my dad was gone and would not be able to give me a pep talk for the first day of work. I would not get to buy him presents with my first big paycheck. It sucked, but I couldn't cry. I needed to make sure that everything was in order. I had to notify the relevant people about his death, and I had to make decisions about so many things. My mind never shut down, and I could not sleep. All I could do was survive on coffee, hoping that I would not crash. One day, Claire had had enough of me walking around like a zombie. She told me that I needed to sleep, but I protested. I told her that I needed to meet with his attorney to discuss his will. She told me I could reschedule, but I was adamant that it needed to be done right then and there, and I did not want the vultures, who are our extended family members, 
to start having designs on the family fortune. Already, they were watching me to see just how alert I was, to see if they could not trick me out of some money. I wasn't a fool. I knew who to trust and who not to, and I just had no idea that the ones I was supposed to watch were the ones who were right beside me. Thus, I found myself falling asleep, only to wake up to my sister jumping onto me. She knocked the wind out of me, with energy that she had no right having at the time. She was screaming. I could not tell if she was excited or terrified. I told her quieten down. She was going to burst my eardrums, and she calmed down. And then she sat down on my armchair, and I wondered how I had even fallen asleep and figured I must have crashed. After I got my bearings, I told her to say what was on her mind. And she told me that the attorney had just been here, and she said that Dad had given her the home. I was shocked by her statement. She was too young to own a house, and she was in college. It would have made more sense for him to give the house to my stepmother, as she was the oldest. I asked if she was certain that he had given her the home. She said, of course. He had, because she was his favorite daughter. The rage that went through me at that moment was swift and hot. I kept my face calm and told her I needed to freshen up, and then we would talk later. When she left, I sat in silence for a while, and then I started to laugh. At first, it was a laugh of disbelief, which quickly turned into a scream. What the hell? He knew what this house meant to me. Now he's just going to give it to her? I thought that he loved us. Ah. <sighs> But maybe uh, what should have been telling me for years was true. Maybe he loved her more. After all, she allowed him to spoil her at all times, and she spent more time with him, and they had similar interests, even. Her words would not leave my head, and after all that I've done, I had not even gotten a corner of this house to myself. I wanted to shake him awake and ask him what he thought he was doing. She was not old enough to run a household, and this was not right. Eventually, I freshened up, feeling much more refreshed, and I went to the kitchen to get some food. I ran into my stepmother there. I greeted her, but she did not greet me back. I asked if all was okay, and she said no, it was not. She needed me to pack all my things and leave, and it was no longer my home. I laughed and told her that it was not her house either, it was her daughter's. She scoffed and said that it was the same thing. She said that she had nothing against me, she just thought that I had overstayed my welcome and simply needed to go back to my city. I had been here for two weeks already, and it was starting to feel like I was never going to leave. I was gobsmacked by her sudden attitude change. But you know what? I was unfazed. I told her that I would be out of the house by tomorrow, and it's not that deep. They just needed a space in their house, and my work here is done, I guess. You can try to be good all you want, but ungrateful people will never see your value. They'll be calling me within a week to tell me that they cannot manage the home. Well, it'll be their problem, not mine. After the long rest I had thanks to Claire's sleeping pills, I'm ready to take on the world. Well, a week later. So, I left my dad's house a week ago, and I've spent the past week in bed doing nothing. Once I was alone in my room, all my emotions crept up on me and I felt such an aching loss. It was tangible. I realized that he was truly gone, and I had just gotten kicked out of his home. By the way, my so-called sister did not stop me from leaving. It appears that she and her mother were in agreement with each other. So I've taken a week to myself with no contact with the outside world. I have not even touched my phone in days. Today, I woke up feeling much better, like I would not mind dealing with the world, so I switched on my phone and checked my emails. I had a lot of emails from my dad's attorney. She really needed to meet with me about what I was going to do with my father's estate. The fog in my head had now cleared enough to realize that there was a huge part of his estate that was unclaimed. I assume that it just went to my stepmother, but now that I thought about it, there's a chance that he left me with something. I hope that, at least, and I hope that he had left me enough money to survive a while. I looked for a job, at least, and since I was not even sure if he loved me at all, I have scheduled a meeting with my father's attorney for next week. We're going to discuss the will and see which way to go, and I'm still thinking about how shady it was that Claire gave me sleeping pills just before the attorney arrived. 
It makes me think that there's more to all this than I'm even seeing. Well, I'll find out everything on Monday. Now it's time for me to get out of bed, take a bath, clean my room. Oh, and I should probably hit the gym as in yesterday. <laughs> my appetite came back. I've been stress eating, and I've also been so upset about the job that I missed out on. Maybe I should contact my aunt to see if she can hook me up with something. No matter how small, it's just so hard to get a hold of her due to her busy job. She was not even able to attend the funeral, but she sent a video saying her condolences. Well, enough with the procrastinating. I have to get up now. Update number one. I knew it. There was so much more to this than what they told me. Did uh, they really think I was this dumb that I would not be able to find out that there was a clause? Both mother and daughter, they claim that there was no clause, but I think they heard it and didn't tell me. I had a virtual meeting with the attorney and she read the will to me. My sister did indeed get the mansion. My stepmother also got a decent amount of money to take care of herself. Then for me, he gave me, wait for it, everything he had, 10 million. I'm sure that my eyes were as big as a saucer when she told me that all of the money for me, I've not even had a million in my bank account ever. Growing up, I was well off. My dad bought me the best of everything. He was rich and made sure that I went to the best schools and the best of things. And the only thing he did not entertain was giving me unlimited money. I used to envy the other kids at my school whose parents gave them credit cards with endless limits. But now I'm glad for it because I did not have a disposable income. I developed quite the good work ethic and I wanted to make my own money. When I was in college, I was running my own little business selling some scented candles that I made and sculpted into anything that my customers wanted. I'm sure that if my father had reached the age of 70, I would have had my own money, and he would have been so proud. Unfortunately, that did not happen. Instead, he had heart failure and was taken away from us too soon. So now, I have all the money that he worked hard for, and she continued to tell me that most of the money was tied up in investment portfolios and told me who to speak to about managing them. There's still some money, of course, left for me to stay afloat until I get a job. Not sure what I'm going to do with my investment portfolio yet, but I have plenty of time for that. She then added that there was a clause in all of this which was very important. The clause was specifically meant for me, as I was the oldest and had full control of the estate. It went as followed. My sister. Well, she can keep the house and the money set aside for her under the condition that she finishes her degree and gets married, of course. She cannot get married to just anybody, though. It has to be a man whom I deem worthy, which means that he must be able to take care of her. Emphasis was put on the fact that she cannot, under any circumstance, be gay. Of course, my typical father had to put that in there. Ugh. Now, before you get all judgmental, let me explain. My father has always had these views since we were young. He just does not believe in gay marriage for his children. He has absolutely no problem with other people doing it. He just told the two of us that he needed us to be able to give him grandkids, and I think that's why he put the claws in the will. Well, I have no problem with gay people. I believe that people must live their lives as they like. I have no problem with the claws for her either. I'm sure that she's going to be able to finish her degree. However, I don't want to be a gossiper. But I had heard and seen some things that suggest that she might not be completely straight. I don't have proof, though, and I'm not going to stoop that low to make her lose the house. It's her has to lose. She has to finish this year and pass well for me to make sure that she gets her money. And I don't really care about when she gets married and who she gets married to. After all, you know, I have the power of the estate. On the other hand... There was a clause for me too. In order to claim my money, I just have to have a degree, which I have. It's not an issue at all. So I'm going to get my money in a few days, get my life in order, and make plans for the future. I've also sent an email to my aunt asking her for help finding an internship. I don't care about how much money I'm getting to be making. What I really care about is the experience. I want to find myself doing the job that I've dreamt of so much about. 
I also want to be able to travel, meet foreign dignitaries. Who knows? Maybe my future husband's going to be there. In a week, I'm going to see my sister at her college, so I can discuss the clauses with her. I also just want to make sure that she's behaving and settling in well. The last thing I want is for anything or anyone to ruin her chance at getting an education. She knows that I'm coming, and we have a whole day of activities already planned. I guess I've mellowed out a bit towards her after hearing the full will and not what Claire told me. I don't mind about the house as long as it's well taken care of. What I want to focus on is keeping this family together. I know that's what my father truly wanted, for his family to be there for each other in times of need. So I might even swallow my pride and start speaking to Claire soon, but it's all in baby steps. I have to go now. I got jobs to apply to. Wish me luck. I'm going to need it. Update number two. Well, I did not think that my visit would turn out to be such a crap show, but it did. She's making it very difficult for me to vouch for her here. I mean, she knew how important getting her education was to father. He always told us that he did not want us to just rely on him. He wanted us to have our own careers, and he gave us total freedom in choosing our careers, thus giving us the chance to actually do well in school. But she's not serious about this, and I'm starting to get worried. So, I visited her in college the past weekend, and we had a lot of fun activities. I met her friends and even got to speak to her teachers. It was parents' weekend, but her mom said that she would not come, and she told me that her mom hardly ever checked up on her these days, and that's concerning. After all, she just suffered a big loss. As her parental figure, it was my job to make sure that she was adjusting well, and I really thought that she was. She told me that she was doing well, very well, only to find out that was an utter lie. I found out when one of her friends blurted out that she was actually in academic probation. She had failed a bunch of exams that were very important and would have to take them at a later stage. And this meant that her graduation had to be pushed up. I asked her if dad's death affected her grades and she said no. I asked if she wanted to change her course and she said no. She told me that she just had problems managing her time and concentrations. She said that she told her mom about it several times, but she said she was making it up, and that's when I had to get real with her. I told her if she did not graduate, the house would be mine, and so would the money that dad left us. I told her that she had a year to turn things around, and then I would give her the money. I also told her that while there was a clause for her to find a good husband and marry him, there's no rush. She had years to do it. I know that Dad's claw said that she had to be married, but I don't think that he thought he would die too soon. I'm sure he thought she would at least be over the age of 25. I also had no choice but to tell her that under no circumstances would she be gay. She told me that she was sure I was enjoying having all the power since he was my biological father. She told me, that she would do all of that just so she would get her money. But she did not want to have a relationship with me. She told me that I always made her feel bad about herself because my life was going oh so well. She also told me that when I left in the morning, there was no need for me to tell her. She believed that her mother was right about me monopolizing her father's death. Hearing her say such words was very sad. I felt like we were getting, well... They're his sisters, but I guess we were not. She's made her choice, so all I can do now is just respect her. Update number three. This one is a year later. I've just come back from overseas. My aunt got me an interview and I got my first job. It was a wonderful year of hard work and new experiences. I'm going to be here for a little while, and then I'm going back. I have no contact with my sister and Claire for the time that I've been gone. However, it's been about a year now, so I had to check in and see if she had achieved what I wanted her to achieve. I sent her a very formal email, telling her that I wanted to see her certificate to make sure that she graduated, otherwise I was going to take everything away from her. Uh, a couple hours later. She sends me her certificate and told me to leave her alone. She had done all that I said she would do, but of course I'm not dumb. I had a sneaking suspicion and that 
all was not as it seemed. She just wanted to get me off her back so that she could enjoy the money without doing any of the work. See, I called her university in order to get her qualification verified so that I could make the official transfer. After this, there would be nothing between us. It was confirmed. It was fake. She never graduated. She dropped out shortly after I got my job and left the country, and I was curious about what my sister had been up to instead of doing the studies like I told her to. Come on, I made it so much easier for her to get the money. I was not stupid. By making her get a degree, I knew she needed something to fall back on. While she got a good amount of money from her dad, she would not be able to live off of it for years. I was certainly not going to take care of her with my money, so education was her best bet. So I booked my flight and showed up in our hometown without telling anybody. I arrived late into the evening. It's been a long flight and all I wanted to do was sleep. When I got to the house, I had the shock of my life. The house was filthy. There were empty bottles, fast food boxes, so much lying around. There were also people sleeping on the couch, the stairs, etc. The state of the house was truly debilitating. I looked for my sister and found her in her room. She was smoking something and a bunch of people were also in there. When she saw me, she ran at me excitedly and asked when I had come home. I told her that we would talk in the morning, but her friends had to leave. So, in all my tiredness, I had to chase away like ten people who were in several states of inebriation. I found her mother, passed out by the pool, looking like a complete disaster. I just shook my head in disbelief. So this is what my dad had in mind when he left the house to her, huh? She was throwing parties and wasting her life after dropping out. Come on! She really decided to fail like that. I went to bed knowing that it would not help to talk to them. The next morning, she was shocked to see me. She tried to act as if she had done nothing wrong and was happy to see me. And she still talked about me officially signing everything over to her as if the certificate she gave me was real. I told her to shut up and listen to me. I told her that I gave her an ultimatum to prove that she was serious about life and so that I could transfer the rest of the money to her. I needed her to prove that she was mature enough to own this home. Her actions of lately proved that she was still a child. Her mother tried to butt in and tell me that I had no right to speak to her kid like that. I told her to shut up because she was acting more like a child than Violetta was. She then starts to scream at me, insulting me, calling me names. She told me that I was jealous of them because they got the house and their lives were simply better than mine. I told them that at least I was not trying to recover from a bender after pretty much poisoning my body. I told them that they were super embarrassed and that I was going to petition the court to seize the home and her inheritance money. She had failed and fulfilled none of the wishes that my father had asked. Viola then said that if I dared to, she would tell people that I did this because I'm, well, not liking the fact that she's bisexual. I told her I did not care who she was attracted to. What I cared about was how careless she was at wasting her life away. I told her that she needs to learn a tough lesson about life. Her mom then came up to me and slapped me pulled my hair and banged my head on the countertop. It happened so fast. The next thing I knew, I was bleeding from my head and she was telling me to leave. So I left for my own safety. And right now I'm gathering all the ammo I can just to see taking back what's rightfully mine. They've proven that they don't deserve it. Update number four. A couple months later, they thought I would never do it, right? They carried on their behavior, mocking me at every turn. They were not prepared when they were summoned to court, and they did not care. They did not care if the case went on for weeks. The lawyer worked overtime to try to get the house for me, but it did not work. I had all the proof I needed to claim both the house and the money that Dad left for Violetta. The judge granted me what I wanted, and they were left with nothing. I woke them up early in the morning after they had been partying for a long time and kicked them out into see the streets. They made a lot of noise and it was very public, it was quite eventful, and I had to get the police involved just to kick them out of my premises. 
but I succeeded and they were out. After that, I spoke to letting uh, an agent about turning the house into a bed and breakfast. I got somebody to manage it and made plans to leave the country again. Now I'm in another country living my dream with no worry in the world. And <laughs> my stepmother and Violetta have become estranged. They blame each other for what happened and went their separate ways. Well, it turned out that my stepmother already had an eye on the person that she wanted to marry next. And she managed to snag a widower who had a fairly good life and abandoned her daughter to the streets. Violetta has lost herself in the world of party and substance abuse, and there's no way to bring her back. Her friends have tried to help her. They've called me multiple times and said what she's up to, and I've bailed her out so many times, but it's not worked. She's been quite adamant that she's going to live her best life. She told me to leave her alone because I was not her parent, so I have no choice but to do that. There's nothing I can do to help her now. She is simply on her own. What I can focus on is my future. I'm now very much alone in this world. My father, well, as we know, he's passed away. I've not spoken to my biological mother in years, and my stepsister is stuck in a reckless behavior. And I have, however, made new friends at work. Some that I connect with on a deep level and have started to consider to be my family. I'm very happy that at least I have this family that I chose. I have no idea what's in store for me, but I hope it's something good. So guys, I'll be honest with you, the comment section of this one was very, very mixed up. I would say it was like 50-50 with each other arguing. A lot of the people were saying, the reason that Violetta and Claire, the stepmother of OP, became homeless as on the streets is due to the fact that OP did not help them out with a substantial amount of money that OP had. We're talking three mansions and millions of dollars. And OP not being a part of their life led them to the streets. That's one uh, opinion. Another opinion is the fact that Claire, well, they don't deserve anything. They were toxic, they were evil, they were bragging to OP, and just like the will stated, if Violetta does not complete college and get married, then she doesn't get anything. So a lot of people were saying how you have to listen to the will because that's what the person wanted. Guys, I do want to know your thoughts, opinions on this story. Drop it downstairs in our comment section. My name's Mr. Redito, and I narrate these sort of stories every single day. If you guys want to be a part of these videos, hit that subscribe button. I'll catch you later, and remember, it's cool to be kind. Peace.